Part Three: Installing the ODUs and IF cables. Chapter One: Installing the ODU for a One Plus Zero non-protection system. Note: This photograph was taken on the ground and is for demonstration only. In a One Plus Zero non-protection system, the ODU is directly mounted on the back of the antenna. Before the installation. Ensure that the polarization direction of the antenna and the type of the ODU are compliant with the design. Remove the protective cap from the antenna feeder. Apply appropriate lubricant to the gasket of the feeder. Ensure that the polarization direction of the ODU is the same as that of the antenna. Slowly feed the antenna interface of the ODU into the antenna feeder until the four latches on the ODU engage with the four hooks on the antenna. Close the four latches cornerwise, and the installation is completed. Chapter two: Installing the hybrid coupler for a one plus one protection system. First, verify that the type of the hybrid coupler is compliant with the design. By default, the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler adopts vertical polarization. But if the antenna adopts horizontal polarization, ensure that the polarization direction of the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler is the same as that of the antenna. How to change the polarization direction of the hybrid coupler? Use the hex key wrench to loosen the screws to fasten the polarization part in the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler, and remove the polarization part. Then replace the vertical polarization converter with a horizontal polarizer. Fix the polarization part into the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler. Ensure that the arrow indicator on the polarization part points in the horizontal direction. Fasten the polarization part by using the screws. Note. Store the horizontal polarizer or the removed polarization converter in a proper manner. After the hybrid coupler is hoisted to the designated place, apply an appropriate rust-proof lubricant to the captive screws on the hybrid coupler to prevent the captive screws from being fixed so tight that they cannot be loosened during maintenance. Remove the protective cap from the antenna feeder. Apply an appropriate lubricant to the gasket of the feeder. Note: Do not apply the lubricant to the face of the feeder; otherwise, signal transmission will be affected. Verify that the polarization direction of the hybrid coupler is the same as the polarization direction of the antenna. Slowly feed the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler into the antenna feeder until the four latches on the hybrid coupler engage with the four hooks on the antenna. Close the four latches cornerwise. Screw in the four captive screws about 70% on the hybrid coupler and use the hex key wrench to tighten them cornerwise. Chapter Three: Installing the ODU for a One Plus One protection system. First, verify that the type of the ODU is compliant with the design. Apply an appropriate lubricant to the gasket of the feeder of the hybrid coupler. Note: Do not apply the lubricant to the face of the feeder; otherwise, signal transmission will be affected. Ensure that the polarization direction of the hybrid coupler is the same as that of the ODU. Slowly feed the antenna feeder of the hybrid coupler into the antenna interface of the ODU until the four latches on the hybrid coupler engage with the four hooks on the ODU. Close the four latches cornerwise. Repeat the operations to install the other ODU. Note: Ensure that the IF interface on the ODU faces left or right. Downwards after the ODU installation is complete, the main ODU must be installed on the main interface of the hybrid coupler, and the standby ODU must be installed on the standby interface of the hybrid coupler. Ground the ODUs after the ODU installation is complete. Remove the nuts on the grounding bolt of one ODU. Connect the OT terminal of the grounding cable to the grounding bolt and tighten the nut. Determine and create the length of the grounding cable according to the location of the grounding point. Strip a certain length off the insulating layer and expose the conductor. Glide an OT terminal over the conductor and ensure that the cross section of the conductor is level with the end surface of the OT terminal. Use crimping pliers to compress the terminal to ensure a reliable connection. Finally. Properly fasten the grounding cable to the iron tower or the grounding bar and tighten the nut.
Remove the rust and anti-rust paint from the iron tower when fixing the grating clip. Chapter four: Installing the IF cable. One: Making connectors for the IF cable. Required tools are wrench, snap-off knife, diagonal pliers, and file. Glide a lock nut over the IF cable. Use the snap-off knife to strip two centimeters cable sheath. Be careful not to damage the shielding layer. Knit in the shielding layer and pass it through a clamp. Clamp one. Fold back the shielding layer. Glide another clamp. Clamp two over the cable and fix clamp two between the insulating layer and the shielding layer. Trim off the surplus shielding layer and leave only about four millimeter to be pressed on clamp one. Strip off the white insulating layer to make the cross section of the insulating layer level with clamp two, and expose the core wire. Cut the excess length of the exposed core wire and leave about six millimeter. Then use a file to taper the edge of the core wire and clean out the metal fillings. Fit the cable head into the connector shell and tighten the lock nut. Specifically, use the solid wrench to fix the connector shell, and use the adjustable wrench to rotate and tighten the lock nut. Check if there is a short circuit or an open circuit in the IF cable. If the IF cable functions normally, it indicates that the making of the IF cable connector is successful. Note: Rotate the lock nut instead of the connector shell to tighten the connector. Use proper force to rotate the lock nut to prevent damaging the outer covering of the connector. Two, hoisting and connecting the IF cable. Determine and create a length of the IF cable with a surplus of three to five meter based on the design distance between the IDU and the ODU. Before the IF cables are hoisted, take proper protection measures and dustproof measures for the IF cable connectors. Label the cables so that the main cables can be distinguished from the standby cables, and there is no confusion when IF cables are connected. Bind. The IF cable with a cable tie. Do not bind the IF cable at the connector to prevent the connector from being damaged during the hoisting. Also, ensure that the IF cable is not bent or twisted during the hoisting. Use cable ties to fix the IF cable to the tower after the hoisting is complete. Then connect one end of the IF cable to the IF connector of the ODU. Rotate the connector clockwise. You can use a wrench to gently tighten the connecting nut. Take waterproof measures for the part of the cable below the ODU and the part of the cable just outside the IDU room, to prevent rainwater from entering the equipment along the cable and causing an equipment failure. Note: the IF cable is used to transmit IF signals and supply power to the ODU. Therefore, before installing the IF cable to the IF connector of the ODU, ensure that the power is turned off. Otherwise, a short circuit occurs and damages the equipment. Do not twist the head or connector of the IF cable; otherwise, the inner shielding layer will be damaged, which may cause a short circuit and thus damage the equipment. Before routing the IF cable, tidy up the cable. Pay attention not to twist the cable connector. You need to coil the IF cable after the waterproof curve below the ODU into a loop with a diameter of 0.6 meter and bind the loop to the pole in case the antenna is adjusted. Three, waterproofing the IF cable. After the IF cable is installed, you need to take waterproof measures. Specifically, wrap the adhesive waterproof tape around the connection between the IF interface of the ODU and the IF cable. Next, we will explain how to waterproof the connection between the IF cable and the ODU. First, spirally wrap a layer of PVC tape around the connector. Then unwrap the adhesive waterproof tape and strip off the release paper. Attach one end of the tape to the cable two to five centimeter away from the connector. Ensure that the adhesive layer is facing inwards. Stretch the tape to evenly shorten the width to three quarters to half of the original. Maintain the width in the following operations. Use the tape to spirally wrap the cable upwards, starting from five centimeters below the connector, with the outer layer covering half area of the inner layer. After the tape wraps to the top of the connector, wrap the cable spirally downwards by using the same method described earlier. After the tape wraps to two to five centimeters below the connector, wrap the cable spirally upwards by using the same method described earlier. 
Make sure that you have wrapped the cable with three layers of waterproof tape. Squeeze the unwrapped cable to force out the air between the layers, so that the three layers are fully and tightly glued to one another. Following the same method, wrap three layers of PVC tape around the unwrapped cable. Ensure that you maintain a proper stretching strength during the wrapping so that the width of the PVC tape remains three quarters to half of the original. Finally, use cable ties to tightly bind the two ends of the PVC tape to prevent the PVC tape from becoming loose. Affix the correct waterproof label to the IF cable. 4. Grounding and fixing the IF cable. The IF cable is a type of coaxial cable used to connect the IDU and the ODU. The IF cable transmits IF signal and supplies power to the ODU. As most parts of the IF cable is routed outdoor, outdoor environment can greatly affect the performance of the IF cable. Therefore, the following requirements are proposed for the grounding and fixing of the IF cable. 1. One IF cable should have at least three grounding points which are close to the ODU, close to the entrance of the equipment room, and at the middle of the IF cable. The middle grounding points should be evenly distributed on the cable. How to ground the IF cable? Strip a length of outer sheath off the IF cable according to the width of the grounding clip. Fix the grounding clip to the shielding layer of the IF cable by securing the screws. Following the same waterproofing method as described previously, take waterproof measures. After the waterproofing operation is complete, fix the other end of the grounding clip to the grounding bar of the iron tower or directly to the iron tower. Note, do not ground the IF cable at the point where the cable is bent. Remove the rust and interrust paint from the iron tower when fixing and grounding the clip. 2. Because the IF cable needs to be routed from the top of the tower into the equipment room, the IF cable is always long. The wind outdoor can cause the cable to shake or even become loose. Therefore, you need to fix the IF cable properly. It is recommended that use cable ties to fix the IF cable to the tower. Use one cable tie for every one meter of the cable. Note: Use cable ties to fix the IF cable at the two ends of the waterproof curve. Use cable ties to fix the IF cable 20 centimeters above and below the grounding point.